On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Iranian Drone Carrier. So one of the books I recommend all the time is a book by Bruce Jones and called, uh, it's entitled To Rule the Waves. And what Bruce Jones does is he talks about the fact that post-World War II, and also, I, I will also margin uh, Mark Levinson's uh, most recent book talks about this too, is that post-World War II, the United States and its allies created a open ocean whereby global trade could prosper. And really, if you look post-World War II to the modern day, there's been very few obstructions to global trade on the ocean. Yes, we've had conflicts. There have been issues. The most probably obvious one was the tanker war of the 1980s in the Persian Gulf. We may see something similar developing in the Black Sea right now. But largely, ocean shipping have been able to go, yeah, there were pirates, the Somali pirates, but in true, that was a, a gnat on, 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 on a buffalo. It was, it was not a big issue. However, this story from Maritime Executive, which comes from H.I. Sutton over at Covert Shores, is one I think should start giving us a little bit of pause. Iran is converting two Panamax box ships into drone carriers. Come down here, the uh, Iran Islamic Revolutionary Guard box ship to warship conversion project appears to be aimed at producing drone carriers. Last year, open source intelligence analysts obtained a photo of what appeared to be the new IRGC base ship at a shipyard in Bandar Abbas. The vessel's deck house and hull were painted a coat of haze gray with gun emplacements on the stern, uh, but her lines were identical to a Panamax box ship. However, the details may differ slightly. The new photos analyzed by H.I. Sutton appear to indicate the ship is being fitted with a giant overhanging deck on her port side, like an exaggerated version of an aircraft carrier's flight deck. Uh, goes on here, while this may not be quite an aircraft carrier, neither does it appear to be a base ship. Uh, Iran local media accounts suggest that the vessel will become something unique, a storage and launch pro uh, platform for Iran's militarized drones. It also appears that the IRGC will be converting two box ships to a drone carrier configuration. This operation by the Iranians is not new. Back last year in July of 2022, this story on the war zone, Iran unveils ominous new naval drone carrier division. The unit supported by drone-laden ships and submarines is another sign of the asymmetric capabilities unmanned aerial vehicles provide. So Tyler Rogaway wrote this piece and really goes in some detail here talking about what Iran is doing and how they're developing this type of capability. And when you look at the capabilities they have, it's quite extensive. The drones being launched from Kilo class submarines. You can see it coming from modified vessels that Iran has put these drones on. Uh, it is just an extensive capability for them. Going on here, we see the same thing here with Iran unveils its largest naval vessel yet, a converted tanker. Iran has unveiled this back in 2021, its largest vessel yet, a converted Aframax tanker named the Macron. Tanker trackers identified her as the former Beta, a 2010 built tanker previously owned and operated in Dubai and flagged in Liberia. The newly purposed and renamed Macron makes her debut at a missile exercise in the Gulf of Oman on Wednesday. This vessel recently sailed all the way to Venezuela. And when you look at it, it looks a lot like the United States expeditionary support bases. However, basically what they did is instead of building from scratch a new vessel and cutting out the oil tanks what they have done is basically just taken the oil tanker and slapped a deck on top of it for flight operations and the ability to move other vessels and small vehicles on board pretty extensive flight deck all the way up forward and the capability to launch vessels again this is all part of the Iranians' attempt to become much more asymmetric, to be able to get forces out beyond the reach of the Persian Gulf and their coast into the Indian Ocean, into the Red Sea, and even as far as the Atlantic, with a recent story talking about Iran discussing about stationing vessels in Panama. But let's talk a little bit more about these new vessels being built by the Iranian Navy. Over here to the story on covert shores this is it right here and i'm going to scroll down here because i want to show you the images this is the images that you're seeing here so this is looking off the port bow forward you see the old container ship cells right here but this is the overhang that's being mounted 
on the port side with a potential kind of flight pattern here. I understand Iranian drones have been attacking basically Israeli-owned vessels for a couple of years now. We've seen these. They've been launched largely out of Bandar Abbas and the south shore of Iran toward vessels that are operating either in the Persian Gulf or out in the Gulf of Oman. But we've also seen this happen in the Red Sea to a lesser extent. But now Iran is outfitting two vessels that could become basically these drone-style carriers. And these vessels will make the potential for the open seas to be basically the Wild West in some ways for the Iranians to attack shipping on the high seas. Uh, they could be targeting Israeli-owned shipping. They could target any shipping. But remember, most shipping is not under national flags anymore. They're under open registries, Panama, Liberia, Marshall Islands, Cyprus, uh, Isle of Man. And so the Iranians could basically wage war against certain ships and certain owners, really with very little checks against them. Uh, we have seen that the drone attacks that have been done by the Iranians uh, really have not been countered as much. We've seen drone attacks. We've seen limpet mine attacks. Uh, we've seen this for quite a few years now coming out of Iran. But this potential to go mobile and attack shipping out on the high seas, this could be an escalation that we're seeing. What if Ukraine does this and outfits a vessel to attack Russian vessels? on the high seas in international waters. What happens if other nations begin to do this? Again, we've had peaceful seas for nearly 70 some years post World War II. There have been exceptions, there have been wars, I'm not saying it hasn't been completely without it, but largely the open oceans have allowed this massive growth in trade. But now the Iranians have the potential here to destabilize the area. And this could be other nations. We're already seeing other nations doing this. Turkey has taken some amphibious vessels, outfitting them as drone carriers. Aircraft carriers are expensive. Not everybody can afford F-35B Lightning's jump jets. Uh, we see Japan and Korea doing that. But other nations can outfit these drone carriers. And drones can operate with almost no identification on them. And how do you trace them back? very difficult to do. Uh, are we going back to the golden age of mercantilism where piracy ran amok? I don't know. But this is a new challenge that we see on the horizon going forward. Navies need to be thinking about this. What's the U.S. Navy plan to counter you know, these, these issues out there? What flag am I going to fly on my commercial ship? Because if I'm flying the flag of Panama, Liberia, or the Marshall Islands, I'm basically hoping that the seas are peaceful. Uh, but what, if they start getting attacked by drones or forced to pay money to sail through the old age of tribute, the Barbary pirates, this could change the way shipping is handled on the open ocean. Uh, it's an interesting inflection point going forward, something we should be thinking about in 2023. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'd be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. Listen, this page has grown tremendously. We opened in March of 2021 and got 30,000 subscribers in the first year. 2022, 40,000 additional subscribers. We're at the cusp of 70,000 subscribers right now. So obviously my goal is to get this channel up in over 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. But in truth, the issue of subscribers is great, but I just want to keep the channel going. That is my big goal. Whether I have 70,000 or seven or 700,000, it doesn't matter. What I like to do is keep the channel going. And I do that through the support of people like you who watch, subscribe, like, share, and more importantly, those who contribute to the page, either through that super thanks button below or over on Patreon. And over on Patreon, you become a patron of the page. You become a weekly or, or excuse me, a monthly or, or yearly subscriber for just a few dollars. And it goes to allow me to keep this channel going and devote resources that I would typically be doing other jobs for. But I enjoy this much more. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.